The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, what do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same, and he answered, I am going, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of heaven ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him, and even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. With our family of parishes, uh, we have been organizing and we'll have the phone system fully kind of functional in mid-October, getting things ready to, to figure out how we can work. All three of our parishes are, are interconnected now with our phone system so you can transfer a call from one to the other. So it ends up, I'm gonna have my office at St. Angela. The transition team had originally said the offices would be at Assumption, but with COVID, we're not going to spend money that we don't have. And so the, the two Italian speaking priests will be officed at St. Angela, and uh, there'll be somebody at St. Alphonsus and people here, and we can all communicate with each other. And I'll still be living at Assumption, so I'll be around and we're all sharing in the masses. So this past week, I spent a lot of time packing because I've been in my office now for five years and I've accumulated many things. I was stunned at how much I've gotten. When I came to Windsor five years ago in March I sent a large suitcase with Father McLeod who was here at the time. I came to visit and brought a suitcase and outside of that everything else fit in my car and I drove from Edmonton to Windsor and that was it for my bedroom and my office. Well, now it just seems like I've got piles and piles of things. I've gotten papers, I've gotten gifts and statues and little knickknacks and like I couldn't believe. So I filled some boxes and I also filled the recycle bin several times and uh, gave some things to St. Vincent de Paul and brought some things out of my office and put in my bedroom to get rid of, of so many of these things that in one way or another have become important to me, sentimental value or whatever. And so I, I was so conscious of that as I was packing and moving things when I thought of the fact of what happens with migrants and refugees who so often are forced to flee with the clothes they have on their back and maybe a handful of important papers or a couple of very important things to them, and that's it. You know, a couple of weeks ago, there was a fire in the refugee camp, the huge, huge refugee camp, mostly Syrians on the island of Lesbos, part of Greece. And most people the very little that they had, they lost. The camp was almost totally destroyed. And I'm worrying about, can I live without this? Do I need this? Do I need that? It's really a, a powerful thing. And then I started thinking about my, my own family. There used to be a boat from Palermo Sicily to New Orleans, Louisiana. And so because of that, lots of Italians in Southern Louisiana and Southeast Texas 
are Sicilian in origin, including my family. My great-grandfather came from Corleone in Sicily, left behind his wife and his son, took the boat, and worked for two years and finally had enough money to send for his wife and son. And a cousin found in the National Archives in Washington, D.C., that it was written down when they arrived at the port of New Orleans. They came steerage class, which meant they did not have the right to go up on deck. My great-grandmother and her five-year-old son, my grandfather, had two dollars and one suitcase. That was it. That was all they came with. And they started an entirely new life. On this world day of migrants and refugees, we are called, Pope Francis asks us to welcome, to support, to promote, and to integrate people. So many of you have your own stories of how you got here. Only the indigenous people actually are the ones uh, who were here for a long, long, long time. Other than that, it may be like Deacon Paul who has his, what is it, five great grandfather who came from France in the 1500s, late 1500s, early 1600s. Or it could be somebody who came within the last few weeks or few months. But we all have our story of leaving one place and going to another. Sometimes it's because of war. Sometimes it's because of famine. Sometimes it's because of persecution. And other times it's because of a lack of opportunity and you leave behind your culture, your way of life, your family, your city, your friends, your possessions in search of building a better life. That's a powerful, powerful thing. And so often when refugees or migrants arrive in other countries, we certainly know what happened in Essex County with the migrant workers. They're living in, in very close quarters in things that many of us would not would not accept in terms of sharing of washroom facilities and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it was all highlighted with the spread of COVID. They come and what happens? The people who are already there say, these people are not like us. They don't understand us. They don't belong here. It's a real challenge. Today's second reading is one of the most beautiful passages for me in the letter to the Philippians by St. Paul. We could talk for hours about the Christology, the, the theology of Christ that's, that's implicit in, in this. In fact, it's in every textbook about studying about Jesus Christ, this beautiful hymn of Jesus not, not regarding equality with God as something to be exploited, but humbling himself. But just before that, listen again to these words that Anne-Marie proclaimed for us. Make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. And then, in short, let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Powerful words. May we be known as people who welcome the migrant, people who help to integrate the migrant, people who are willing to learn from the newly arrived so that together as one people of God, we may enter the life that Jesus invites us to.